Hello and welcome to The Word Made Flesh. This is our weekly review of the upcoming Sunday, the Word of God, and how to incorporate it into our daily lives. Lovely. Jonathan, I thought we would do something different today. Yes. Ready? I, we'll find out. <laughs> Let's dive into the Sacred Triduum. Okay. Yeah. Instead of just picking the Sunday readings. Everyone knows Easter Sunday. Pretty we much. should. I mean, that is the, the basis of our faith. You know so, the gist of it. So yeah, I think, but we don't go through, you know, most people do not go to Mass throughout the Triduum. Isn't that crazy? It is. I was thinking as, you know, preparing for Holy Week after Palm Sunday, I just said, you know, where the Eucharist is the source and summit of our faith. Yep. The trid- Triduum liturgies is the pinnacle of of the liturgies we have. Absolutely. And and, and it all culminates with the vigil, the Easter vigil. And that, it doesn't get any more real, any more beautiful, any more just real. Absolutely. I mean, that brings our faith to life and connects us. When we talk about we're back at Calvary, going through the Triduum and culminating with the Easter vigil, that... You, do, you can more clearly see that connection there than at any other liturgy throughout the year. It really is a walk with Jesus through the events of those things. So when we're talking about the Triduum, we're talking about three days. Yes. The three holy days that begin, not at the beginning. Holy Thursday morning is still Lent. Mm-hmm. It's when we get to the evening that we begin the sacred Triduum. So the the, the Triduum begins with the Mass of the Lord's Supper, which is celebrated in the evening hours. Mm -hmm. So from the evening of Holy Thursday to the evening of Good Friday is day one. From the evening of Good Friday to the evening of Holy Saturday is day two. And the evening of Holy Saturday to the evening of Easter Sunday is day three. Right. So that's how we count the three days that extend over Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we begin with the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Yes. Have you you've been to the Mass of the Lord's Supper? I have. Yes. Um, it's kind of normal mm-hmm. from the beginning. Although, if you're if you're in a a parish that observes the traditional uh, understanding of Lent, particularly like at St. Charles, we do. There's no instrumental music throughout the se- the season of Lent, except for a few moments when it's permitted. Right. Holy Thursday kind of breaks with that at the beginning. So we have accompaniment for the opening song, so it's going to feel like normal. Everything will be dressed in white, white vestments. Uh, The Gloria is sung. Right. It's like, whoa, where did this come from? Uh, The bells are rung during the Gloria. It's because we're not there yet. That's in terms right. of the story. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's it's like it's almost like we're starting. Like yeah. that's where it starts. And then as soon as we hit the Gloria, all of the instruments fall silent again, and the bells, church bells, are not rung until the Easter proclamation again, until Easter. So everything goes quiet. Yes. And we enter into the, the liturgy of the word. Which essentially is the story of the Passover. Mm-hmm. Uh, the story of the institution of the Eucharist, so St. Paul right. describing it. And then we have the gospel of what happened after the dinner, the washing of the feet. Yes. So kind of basically tells the story. Mm-hmm. And then we have this beautiful uh, moment after the homily, uh, the washing of the feet. Yes. It's not mandatory, but it's done most of the time. Yeah, and it... it Just like 2,000 years ago, it was uncomfortable for the people getting their feet washed and probably for the priest doing the washing of the feet. Um, But it takes you there. It it helps you realize, like, I don't want someone looking at my feet. You didn't walk around in sandals on dirt all day. (laughs) (laughs) You know? And so... That's um, right. it's, It's humbling, but to think that the Lord of the universe is doing this to me who's quite frankly a nobody yeah um and saying i will serve you and this is what you are to do as well there's a very interesting and strange i I would love to read a scholarly study of this throughout scripture 
but there's there's a there's this this connection throughout scripture with the symbolism of the person's feet and uh, an intimate encounter with that person. So when you talk about uh, when you see when it talks about Jesus' disciples somehow throwing themselves down at his feet or the woman who washed him grasped his feet right. uh, and bathed his feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. Uh, in the Old Testament, the, the, the seraphim are described as the angels with the wings, two that cover their faces, two that cover their feet, and two that keep them a, a flying aloft. And that covering their feet is it covering their intimacy. Is like there's something about that. There's this strange connection. So I don't exactly know the full depth of it, but I always think I'm always brought to that to just think about that that this, and it is, it's this odd thing, like you said, it makes people uncomfortable. There is something <laughs> intimate about there it is. in that really broad sense of that word. So what Jesus is showing is not only just service, but he's also showing us deep love. Yes. And that's why many times the songs that are sung during that time uh, or during offertory right around that time are ubi caritas, where charity and love mm-hmm. prevail, there God is. Most definitely. Yeah, yeah. And then the gifts are brought forward like normal. Right. Sometimes uh, the oils that were blessed uh, at the chrism mass mm-hmm. are also brought in procession with the bread and the wine. So the oils that were brought from the cathedral back to the parishes are presented also to the parish church. So those oils that we will use throughout the coming year. The Eucharistic prayer, there'll be a few little additions to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, As you listen, like on the night the Lord was betrayed, that is this night. So just a few things that like stop you in your tracks. You hear them. You listen to them. You you. It's like whoa. Something is something is new here. Something is different. Right. And then communion distributed as per usual. Right. Uh, but then the blessed sacrament is not placed in the tabernacle. No. And I guess I should note uh, that when you come to mass on Holy Thursday, the tabernacle door will be open. Yes. And it will be empty because, as you said. Hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. I mean, <laughs> Jesus has not yet given us the Eucharist, so the the tabernacle is empty. Everything plays a role. Like everything is done to take you to that moment. Exactly. It is. So we don't have the gift of the Eucharist yet, uh, and then at communion time we do, and then there is the Blessed Sacrament. Then the Blessed Sacrament then is left on the altar. Mm-hmm. Final prayer, the prayer after communion. And then uh, we begin the just what Jesus and his disciples did. After the meal, they got up and they moved to the Garden of Olives, right. singing psalms and hymns and other things. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We'll take up the Blessed Sacrament and the ministers then will process through the church to an altar of repose. Yes. Wherever the, te- wherever the Blessed Sacrament is going to rest for the night. Sometimes it's at a side altar, sometimes it's in a separate chapel, uh, it, it, it might be apart from the church, uh, but the Blessed Sacrament will be taken there. And that really represents the, the Garden of Gethsemane. So it'll be decorated with flowers and right. plants, and it'll just feel garden-esque. Yes, no, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. And it's, it's, it's fun to, so I believe this is the seven church visits, the tradition where you go and visit seven churches and their altars of repose. Yes. And you get to see the beauty but then you're traveling you know it's a, it's a long night just like they had a long night and the you know the apostles were falling asleep mm-hmm. and you'll probably be tempted to fall asleep because it's a long night and it's late and but it brings you there you are there with Jesus in the garden yes and there is that invitation can you not stay awake with me for one <laughs> yes. hour so you you hear that so uh, you mentioned the seven church journey, and that that was a tradition. I'm not. I don't know if that was a Roman tradition. We certainly did it in Rome when I was there as a seminarian. After we would go to Holy Thursday Mass and maybe have supper, then we would go, and we would. It's easy to hit seven churches in Rome. Oh, you sure. just like walk two blocks, and there's another <laughs> church, and just to stop in 
and make seven altars of repose and pray at each altar for a little bit uh, throughout the evening. It was just a wonderful, wonderful tradition. Here you have to drive just a little bit. I mean, not terribly far. And, you know, sometimes getting into a church is difficult these days if you don't have a, a, a code or a fob or something or a key. Uh, but yeah, and that's how Holy Thursday ends. Yes. The Behind the scenes, uh, after people leave, the altar is stripped. So the sanctuary is basically disassembled. Right. The, the yeah, linens, it's... the candlesticks, the... The, the banners, the, the flowers, the carpets, everything. If someone just, came and robbed the place and just took everything... That's what it would look like. That's what it would look like. Yes. So <laughs> the, the sanctuary will be left empty uh, in preparation for Good Friday. The holy water fonts will be drained. Uh, and then Good Friday, day two of the, the Tridium. Yes. Or part one, part two. The one day of the year that no Mass is celebrated. That is true. Well, kind of, sort of. Because you don't celebrate Mass on Holy Saturday until after the sun sets. True. So it, technically it's still Saturday, <laughs> but yeah. There, but you're right. There are no Masses celebrated on Good Friday. And no sacraments even, unless it's an emergency. Unless, exactly. That unless it's... Well, you can celebrate reconciliation and anointing, um, but the other sacraments are withheld until Easter. So those ones that are directly tied to healing and the necessity of that... Uh, but you're right. It is a, a day of mourning, really. Mm-hmm. We've prepared ourselves. We come to, to, to liturgy, the celebration of the Lord's Passion. It's not Mass. You come there, and traditionally the hour is at 3 o'clock. Right. So the liturgy is celebrated at 3 o'clock, but for pastoral reasons, it can be celebrated at a later time. We'll celebrate it at a later time, just so people who may work can participate sure. in it. So we'll have noon stations, and we will then have the 7 p.m., Liturgy of the Lord's Passion. Again, come to church. Tabernacle bare. Yes. Altar stripped. Altar stripped. It's very... Somber? Yes. I guess, yeah. I don't know. It's it's a weird feeling because there's no music. There's, you know, you. it's just silence. And yeah. Even when the ministers come in, there's no singing. It's just the ministers come in. The deacon and the priest fall down upon the floor and and lay face down on the floor before the altar. There's like nothing we can say or do before the one we have crucified. And uh, and then we just kind of pick up where we left off the night before. Mm-hmm. So we'll go right into the, to the first reading. There'll be a brief prayer, uh, but no invitation to pray. It's just we're just going to pray and get into the liturgy of the word. We hear the suffering servant. Yep. Um, and we go back to the Passion. John's version of the Passion. Okay, John's version. And it'll be done very similarly to Palm Sunday. Yes. But this will be John's version of the Passion. Every Good Friday we hear from John. Where this year we heard from Luke on Palm Sunday. On the Palm Sunday, exactly. After the, the Passion is completed, a brief homily may be given. And then there are the solemn uh, intercessions that are prayed before the altar. And there are 10 prayers, uh, usually they're sung, and they are basically that they pray for the entire church and the world bit by bit by bit. So it's almost like as we stand before Jesus saving the world on the cross, we lift up every part of the world to him uh, and present it to the Father for salvation. Yeah, and it's done that way everywhere. It is. is. And every year it's the same, you know, and so it's, it is lifting up the world. We have, you you may have the traditional, let us kneel, let us stand. So a lot of up and down, but it's like, this is what we're going to pray for. Now let us kneel. And everybody kind of make your own prayers. Let us stand. And the priest then offers them all together in a single prayer. We do that 10 times. Immediately following the intercessions, Uh, the cross is revealed to the people. Mm -hmm. And so it may be brought in uh, from the back of church and processed down the center aisle. Or if it already is standing in the sanctuary, it can be uncovered piece by piece and shown in little bits and pieces. Uh, But essentially it's like, behold, the wood of the cross on which was hung your salvation 
Come, let us adore. And yeah. we all adore for a moment or two. Yeah. And it's the, the veneration of the cross is something that I know some people have a hard time wrapping their brain around um, because it, it, it was a torture device that mm. was, <laughs> it, but it, it's also the path to our salvation. You know, that, that, that is the ladder with which we get to heaven. Absolutely. Um, it is. And so to venerate, if it wasn't for the cross, there would not be salvation. Yeah, it's just it's the strange irony that this ugly, ugly thing has now become something beautiful because of what Jesus did upon it. So the priest will venerate first and uh, he takes off his outer garment. The chasuble comes off. He may take off his shoes because he's going to go stand on holy ground. And then the priest will venerate the cross first, followed by the other ministers, followed by the people. And it can be venerated with a touch, a genuflection, a kiss, an embrace. Um, there's many ways to venerate the cross. Yes. And then the cross is set at the altar. And we remember that altar is the cross. And it's right there. And it's Good Friday. And it's Good Friday. So, so we really see it. it. Is, you yeah. really recognize. Boom. There it is. And then uh, we prepare for Holy Communion. Mm -hmm. So what comes from the cross, the fruit of the cross, is the body of the Lord. Yes. And that is given to us uh, for our salvation. And so wherever the Eucharist was reposed, uh, one of the deacons will bring the Blessed Sacrament from the altar of repose, uh, will pray the Lord's Prayer, and then immediately have communion. Mm -hmm. After communion... That's basically it. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a little prayer that basically says, Lord, keep us in your love because we don't deserve it. Amen. And uh, then we just leave. Yeah, we're... Because that's where we're at. That's it. You know, Jesus has died. Ideally, uh, the Blessed Sacrament is completely consumed. Mm -hmm. uh, if not, it's usually consumed immediately afterwards by the ministers if there are any, ho any hosts left over. And then um, we do genuflect to the cross on the way out, recognizing, as you said, without the cross, we don't have salvation. Yes, but then, but that's it. There's it's silence. It's you're leaving a funeral. I mean, kind it, of, sort of. We're we're put back where they, were, the apostles were, and the followers were. Where you don't really know what to do because your Lord and Savior's dead. Obviously, we have the hope and yep. no knowledge that he rises in, on Easter. But, but not yet. But not yet. Because so, we're going through it, like you said, bit by bit by bit. And so it's just that little bit of confusion. And, it, and it's always struck me, leaving that Good Friday of Mass, it's, just, it's unsettling. Yeah, and it's, absolutely it and is. It's, it's and it should be. It, yeah, it's good yeah, that it is. It should be. It's, that's the way it's supposed to be. And then Holy Saturday, nothing happens. There's nothing that goes on, as you said, no sacraments, mass isn't celebrated throughout the day. So it's just a very long day yes. of nothing until the sun sets. Right. Civil twilight is when you are permitted <laughs> to begin the, the Easter vigil of the Lord's resurrection. And that was the official start of a new day. Yes, so, early, yeah, exactly. The Jews always understood that the day ended at sunset so the next one technically began so when the sun disappeared boom we are in the next day so we were kind of following that so the holy holy saturday has to completely end and then at civil twilight uh, we gather for the anticipation for the moment of the lord's resurrection because we don't know when it happened right they they put the body in the tomb before sunset on good friday and then it was the Sabbath, and so nobody came to the tomb because it was a day of rest. And then sometime after the sun set on the Sabbath and before it rose on Easter Sunday, the resurrection took place. Sometime. We don't know when, because right there at the very beginning of Easter Sunday is when the women showed up mm -hmm. and the tomb was already opened. So this is why we gather. As soon as that sun goes down, we're ready. <laughs> so we are there. Not wasting any time. Not wasting any time. And you'll come into church and it's completely dark. Yes. Black. And uh, so when you come in, be careful that you don't trip over anything. 
uh, find your seat, or sometimes they begin outside. Depends on where, what church you're at and how they're going to do this. But a fire is then lit. Yes. And that is the really the symbolism of the resurrection. Like, psh, darkness has been destroyed. Look at the light that just shines through. Yes, it's Just impressive. imagine the, the tomb bursting open and with this great blast of light. And that's really what that Easter fire is, is commemorating. Yes. So we bless the fire. Uh, the Easter candle is presented. We bless the Easter candle uh, and make that candle the body of Christ, really. It's the symbol of oh, the body yes. of Christ. We light it that that body is now alive. And then that body walks through the darkness and begins to light everyone else's candles. So that light then spreads. Yes. It's just such a cool it experience. It's so cool. It's just so <laughs> beautiful. I mean, it is... The body of Christ lighting the world. Yep. And each one of us <laughs> carry this little one and it just gets brighter and brighter and brighter. Uh, and the, the deacon will proclaim the exultant, which is one of the oldest chants of the church, that proclaims the Easter mystery. That this is the night. This yes. is the night. This is the night over and over and over again of our salvation. So big old chant. Um, and then we settle in. That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> While we then sit there and ready, you know, celebrating this resurrection, really kind of gearing up for it, uh, we kind of trace salvation history. All of it. <laughs> All of it. We start in Genesis with creation. Yes. We work through Abraham and Moses and the prophets and the promises and the covenants. And uh, we listen to seven readings mm -hmm. with their responses and a prayer. Yeah. So reading, response, let us pray. Reading, response, let us pray. And we do that seven times. Now, there are some parishes that are faint of heart. And they, <laughs> they don't do all the readings for whatever reason. The people who are here are here for a reason. So, right. so do it up. And it's, it's the whole story. It is the whole if, story. If you don't have each of those elements, the end, the resurrection doesn't hold as much significance because it's not the fruition fulfillment fulfillment yeah yeah it's not the fulfillment of just these it's the fulfillment it was meant to be from the beginning Everything. of time yes and all of those seven readings culminate with the resurrection you'll tell the whole story after all of the old testament readings have been proclaimed then the Gloria is proclaimed again. The Gloria of Glorias. It is. The bells will <laughs> ring again. The, the, the candles are all lit in the sanctuary. Full lights are, are put up. It's, it's, it's like everything just comes back to life. Because right. that's when the lights turn on, you know, fully. Right? Yes. Yeah. That's when everything is like brightened up. It's the, the ritual specifically says the candle lights or the, the lights on the altar are now lit. So everything, you may have partial light before that, but this is when it fully comes up. Um, and then we have the opening prayer. <laughs> then it's the opening prayer. About an hour and 15 minutes in yes. or whatever. After the opening prayer, we sit down again to listen to the New Testament reading. Mm hmm which is a proclamation of the resurrection in, in Paul's words, I believe. Uh, and then we stand up again for the Alleluia, which hasn't been sung since before Ash Wednesday. Right. So that's a, that's a big deal. We like The priest reminds everyone how the Alleluia goes, <laughs> and uh, then everyone starts singing it. The gospel is proclaimed. Uh, the homily is given. And uh, that's... That, then... Depending, many things could happen after yes. that point. Uh, if you're in a church where you have baptisms and receptions into the, the church, many times that will happen then after mm -hmm. the, the homily. So those to be baptized will be brought forward. Those to be received into the church who were baptized in another Christian denomination will be received into the church. Maybe you'll have some Catholics who need to make sacraments like confirmation of First Eucharist. So you'll have all of those make their sacraments, and then Mass continues as usual. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then it seems pretty normal. It's like, all right, here we are. Offertory, Eucharist, all of these things. The Blessed Sacrament is placed back in the tabernacle again mm -hmm. after communion, and we hear the final blessing, 
But go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Yes. That's just a great way to finish the night. It really is. I mean, and it's such a beautiful thing to bring people into the church where Christ gave us the, the I mean, new life was born that day. That's and exactly. These, you know, that is the springtime. And so we bring the new members in. Exactly. Um, when, when Christ and his bride come together, new life is born. And that's what happens. Yeah, it's it's exciting. It's fantastic. I don't know how much of it will make it to with the little ones. You but do have little ones. It's are, not often a liturgy for the little ones. No, but we're we miss it, and we're trying to. I mean, it is something that you want. You need to experience at least once, if not every year. Right. Because right. it is really. That's our faith. It is. You, it you is live our faith through the Triduum. The liturgy of liturgies. Yes, and then. That Easter vigil. Whew. Easter Sunday will be like almost any other Mass then, mm -hmm. except there will be a uh, sprinkling rite and the renewal of baptismal promises. So everyone will renew their baptism promises just as a reminder that this is when we came alive and when we, when we shared yes. in this. So during the Sacred Triduum, a plenary indulgence is given each day. On Holy Thursday, by partaking in the Pange Lingua at the final procession and reposition of the Lord. Uh, during Good Friday, the veneration of the Holy Cross. And at the Easter Vigil, the renewal of your baptismal promises. So uh, a plenary indulgence is granted each of those days. Wonderful. Fantastic. Yeah. You have to go to confession, though, to get that plenary indulgence. So if you haven't done it... You don't have much time. But. Uh, we're running out. In fact, by the time you watch this, confessions may be done. So hopefully you are already yes. very good to go. All right. We are ready to celebrate the, the sacred triduum. Yes. To sing the great Alleluia in a moment. And uh, we'll see you then for these holy days. I'm excited. All right. All right.